Our clique can't communicate with the occupation, otherwise they would have stormed the camp. Correct. Then how are they going to know if we blow it up? Does your commander seem like the kind of man to keep that secret? It's a machine, right? Also correct. Then why do they care so much if it's destroyed? Can't they just make another one? That glowing ball thing in the suit's helmet? It's a kind of consciousness. Consciousness? What does that mean? I don't know exactly. Maybe they used to have actual bodies and uploaded themselves into the sphere. Maybe they were created by another species. The important thing is, there are only a few hundred of those glowing balls. Everything else, the, the, the drones, the walkers, the ships. Automated pieces of a hive mind. They get irritated when you destroy a drone. It's a resource that they have to replace. But when you go after one of those cores. I can tell that you're a good man trying to make the right decision. Are you a good man? No. Why should I listen to you? Because I'm a pragmatist. Sometimes pragmatists do terrible things. So do good men, but that's not the point. In this case, my pragmatism and your morality are on the same side. Would a moral man betray his friends, his commander? To stop an unspeakable tragedy? Of course. You can save every man, woman, and child in the Pacific Northwest. It's in your hands. McGregor won't listen to me. And I don't have enough support in the camp to stop him from destroying the clique. Then you need reinforcements. The occupation. How? You call a certain radio frequency and say a code word. The moment I do that, I'll give us a way. They'll trace the signal right back to the camp. Not if you keep the transmission under six seconds. And then? Wait for a response. They'll call you back on the same frequency and offer terms. If the terms are acceptable, you respond. What kind of terms? Depends what you want. Maybe you ask for amnesty for everyone in this camp. Maybe you demand a spectacular chalet in the Swiss Alps. It's up to you. I've been in your position when it feels like there are no good options. But sometimes you just have to be the man who stands in front of the train. <laughs>